One of the topics that I have covered several times here on the channel, but still get requests for, for various reasons, is voice cloning and conversion, specifically with RVC. It's an app that's out there in several forms, and I've showed you various ways that other people have wrapped up that technology to make it available to you and maybe add a few more features. But if you're new to all of this, and if you'd like to be able to quickly and easily create your own voice clones or voice clones of others, then you're going to want to check out this video on RVC. RVC, like many of the solutions we talk about here, is open source, which means that if you have have a computer that will run it, you can go out there and find it in various places. And I'm going to give you a link in the description below where you can easily download it with just a few clicks onto your system and do everything that we're doing here in this video today. That's if you have a computer that you want to use its resources for, for things like this. If you don't have a reasonably powerful computer, AI applications in general might give you a little bit of a hard time. And that's why there are solutions like today's sponsor, Mimic PC. Mimic PC is a regular sponsor of this channel because they offer the ability for people without a powerful GPU were the means to get one to run some of today's coolest new AI software on other machines that are super, super powerful for really only pennies, certainly compared to buying a GPU and a computer to house it and run that and all the electricity associated with it. When I run applications over at Mimic PC, I use one of their beefier configurations and still it's only $1.19 an hour to run these applications. And some of these applications, you can just jump in, do what you need and get out. So it's literally costing you just a few cents to use and you're not heating up your room or using your electricity. For the purposes of this this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to get this going over on Mimic PC, but if you install it on your own system, you'll still follow basically the same instructions, and I'll show you where to deviate them if you're running it locally from what I'm going to show you here. You can get a Mimic PC account for free, and all you're really paying for is the machine time that you're using. This is my login screen. Up here are suggested apps that you can run. These are machines that I've actually created and are set up for me to jump on and use all the time, and you'll see that I have quite a few machines here. Even though I have an AI capable machine and I build my own models and I do all kinds of AI intensive stuff, now that I have access to Mimic PC, I can also utilize their resources and save a ton of time. I can train multiple models at one time, which I could not do here. And if I did do that here, it would run up a heck of an electricity bill and I would be sweating all day because I'm telling you these machines get hot. So even if you already have an AI setup, you might want to think about duplicating your efforts on a remote site like this. You're going to save time and ultimately tons of money. If if you are, of course, a busy working professional. So we're going to click on add an app and we're just going to look for RBC right now. It's the third one in the list. We just choose it and we're going to click on get started. Here is where you choose the machine that you're going to use. I always jump up to either a large or a large pro. Large pro might be a little bit overkill for this, but you know what? The difference is 20 cents. I'm going large pro. These machines are faster. Whatever you're going to be doing AI wise, you're going to get done quicker here. So it actually is just a much better deal to go with a beefier machine. Because we're training a model, which takes about an hour to do, even on this machine, you're going to want to click on automatic extension, just so you know that the machine will not shut down in the middle of this process. Once you've done that, you're going to click on create and start, and it's going to take two or three minutes for the machine to do everything it's going to do, load up the software. Once your machine starts, this is the interface you're going to have. Now, the good news is they've already got things set up pretty much so you don't even have to mess with the settings. I am going to recommend a couple of setting adjustments, but you honestly don't have to make them. You can do this right out of the box, just how it sits for the most part. Now we are training a voice, which means we need to have a source recording from which we're going to do that training, correct? Now I hear all kinds of recommendations on how much audio you should use. I've tried everything from five minutes to 20 minutes, and I'm finding that 10 to 15 minutes is generally just fine. You do obviously want to have a nice clean recording with as little noise in the background as possible, as little echo, because anything you send into that model for training is going to be reflected in what you produce. So if it sounds crappy going in, it's going to sound crappy going out. For this particular demonstration, I asked my lovely partner Tracy to record about 11 minutes of her talking and just about random stuff in the voice that we want to use for the cloning. If you want to have a subdued voice with your clone then you're going to want to record a sample that sounds subdued. But if you want to sound excited and energetic, you want to do 20 minutes of that. This was just basically conversational. So I just had her saying a few things. Uh, also social media marketing, which, you know, it... things like that. And because I just had her talk for 20 minutes, it's going to have a nice natural cadence to it. We're going to have a natural fluctuation of rhythm and emotion because I told her to tell stories from her life and just all kinds of things. So that's one way to get that source recording and the ideal way. Get somebody in the studio and get them to sing or talk or whatever it is you want to clone. 
alone. However, in a lot of cases, you don't have access to that and you're going to need to get that audio from somewhere else. If you can't get somebody into the studio, you need to source your audio in a different way. And if you're using a voice of a well-known person, you're going to need to find that audio from probably recordings, most likely online. You're going to be downloading videos, you're going to be finding audio clips, and you're going to be extracting the audio from all that to create a 20-minute sample. The challenge with that, of course, is if you want everything to sound consistent, then the recording environment should be the same in all of your samples, and sometimes that's just not the case. Someone may record someone from a talk show or from a movie or just some other clip from the radio, and everything's different about it, and they're wondering why the model doesn't sound right. It's because you've confused it. So as much as possible, you want to get the source audio from the same thing or at least the same environment for recording. If you watch the same talk shows and they have the same mic recording set up, that's fine. But what if you're doing a singer, which a lot of people will want to do here? How are you going to get the isolated voice of a singer? Now, you can find them talking, maybe on talk shows or other recordings, but that's not their singing voice. You'll get a little bit of a different outcome if you train their speaking voice, as we're doing here with Tracy Sample, than if the source audio is singing, because there are certainly different nuances that you throw into a singing voice, like vibrato, for example, that you don't have when you just normally talk. For my purposes with Tracy, I would only be cloning her voice for speaking and not singing at all, so this is appropriate for my use case. You would want to use yours. This suggests, of course, that if you're going to clone the voice of a singer or something like that, you need to isolate that vocal from that music track. Now, right here on this channel, we have talked about so many different ways to do that, but that way is also built right into the software, so you don't have to go find another solution. If you click the Vocals and Accompaniment Separation and Reverberation Removal tab, you'll have several options for isolating the vocals from the music, and it depends on whether or not there's just one singer, several singers, or whatnot. First, we need our source audio, a song with some singing and some instrumentals on it. Just avoid any chance of copyright issues or anything like that. I'm going to use an AI-generated piece of music. Now, anytime we talk about stem separation and we're using AI music as an example, you're going to have a little bit of quality degradation because AI music is simply not generated and quote-unquote recorded the same as studio music. You don't have the fidelity and all the little imperfections and the compression is going to show up. Up. But you'll at least be able to see in this example how it does separate. So first we need to upload the music that we want to extract the vocal from. Remember, the point of extracting this vocal audio in the first place is to get about 10 minutes of it to use to train a model. So I'm just going to show you an example with one song, but what you would want to do ideally is have a whole folder of songs or one long audio file that has enough vocal sample in it to equal about 10 minutes to sample from. But right now I'm just going to do one file. The easiest way to get this audio where it needs to go is just to click here or drop the audio into this area right here. Right now we're just going to choose one piece of audio and then we choose which model we want to use to extract that vocal. And it says up here what each of these different models do. In this case we're going to choose the HP5 only main vocal because that's all we want to extract. This is the folder on the remote system or on your local system where it will be extracted. And then you choose the file format of what you want to extract. I hardly ever use FLAC. Let's just do WAV file here and click on convert. All right, it says it's done. Let's download these real quick. And before we listen to the extraction, let's just listen to at least a few seconds of it pre-extraction. In a room so full of fluff, tiny paws and purrs so tough. Okay, so just one voice and a guitar there. So here's the extraction. In a room so full of fluff. Wow. Tiny paws and purrs so tough. Actually, that was a little better than I thought. It's easier for me to understand the word fluff after it's been extracted, so that's kind of crazy. But you see how clean that was. So now you've used whatever approach to get that 10 minutes of training audio and you're ready to go. So first I need to upload it to the system, so I'm going to go back over here to the input folder, which is where we're going to put any of the audio that we're actively working with. In this case, it is the training sample. In my case, I only have one long file that's 10 minutes or 11 minutes long of Tracy's voice, but I could have multiple files. This process of training is going to scan all all of the audio that is in this folder that you're going to put it in. So you don't have to just have one file, you could have multiples. I just happen to have one file. So I'm going to click to select the files and load up that 11 minute sample of Tracy. And now it's uploaded and it's already in the input folder, which is already predefined to be the folder to look in. So we won't have to change that. So let's go start at the top. Enter the experiment name is the name of the file that you're going to convert. So I'm going to call this Tracy star. You don't really need to change any of these values here. I often will crank up the number of CPU processes because the computer that I've created here should handle it. The path here is already defined. Because there's only one speaker in that recording, we don't have to define which speaker it is. It's the only one there is, so we can just leave that there. The GPU information is already built in. This is the A10. All of this information is also already predefined for you. It knows the video card that it's using and its number. I would recommend just leaving it on RMVPE GPU. Here's where I 
would make some changes for sure. I do more than 20 training epochs. I will normally go at least 150, which is what I'll do here. I'm also going to want to change the save frequency because this is going to tell me how many iterations of this model it's going to save throughout the course of this process. I do want some iterations because if I listen to the final product and it, maybe it sounds overtrained or just not right, I might want to be able to back up to a previous checkpoint. So I save a reasonable amount. If I'm doing 150 epochs, that means the process is going to look at all of this data 150 times. Then if I save every 10 epochs, I'm going to end up with 15 different files to choose from, which is fine. I'll start there. You don't need that many, but we'll just go. Now the batch size per GPU, I'm cranking all the way up to 40 because I know from experience I can do that. It should speed things up. The only other thing I change here is I click on yes to save a small final model to the weights folder at each save point leave all of this alone, and then click on one-click training. Now, this process will take a hot minute. It's going to go through and it's going to analyze all of the audio. It's going to break it up into chunks, and then it's going to start the training. The whole process takes about an hour. At the end of it, you're going to end up with a model file and a .index file. Ideally, you'll want to use both of those where you can in any program that supports RVC conversion, including what's built into this interface right here. The index file is not necessarily required, but it does make the process work because of knowing exactly where to find the piece of the sample it needs to do the conversion. So you want to have that index file just in case you're going to work with the tool that utilizes it because it will make things better. You can track the progress here in this little output information, but if you want a little bit more progress information, click on logs and it will give you a real time update of what's happening. So if you're ever worried it's stalled out or anything like that, you can come over here to this log section and watch. Just know that in this process, especially when it's starting up, there's a lot of times when it's sitting there and it seems like it's doing nothing, but once it gets going, it goes. Now, once the process is done, you're ready to test the conversion right here within this interface. But then I'm going to show you how to download those models for use in other places. But the first thing you'll do is you'll click over here to the model inference tab after you're done with the training, and you're going to click on refresh voice list and index path. Then when you click under here, you'll see all of these save checkpoints that we were talking about. Now, the one that doesn't have any numbers beside it is the most recent one, and that's the one we're going to choose. And you'll see that it automatically finds the appropriate index file for this, so you don't have to do anything here. You can leave all of this as it is, and you can just leave this at RMVPE because that is the format we used when we created the thing. But of course, before we can convert, we have to give it something to convert. So that's when we're going to go back to the input folder, and then we'll just upload a file that we want to be converted into Tracy's voice. So we'll click to select files, we'll upload the sample, and in this case, we'll just need to type in the path of the sample. It is in the input folder, so we do the dot slash input, and then the name of the sample is sample voice dot wave. By the way, this is what the sample sounds like. Hi, it's Bob Doyle. This is a test recording that I'm going to use to test the voice conversion capabilities of RVC. So most likely, you're hearing me using a different voice saying all of this. And now we can click on convert. And now here's the conversion in Tracy's voice. Hi, it's Bob Doyle. This is a test recording that I'm going to use. To so what's wrong with that? It's too low. I didn't transpose this. If you're going from a male voice, especially a deep one like mine, to a female voice, you're going to go the full octave up to 12. But Tracy's voice is a little bit deeper normally. And if I put it up to 12, you'll hear that it's going to be a little bit too high. I'm just going to click convert. And you'll see how quickly that happened. Now listen. Hi, it's Bob Doyle. This is a test recording that I'm going to use to test the... It's just a little too squeaky. It's not exactly her voice. So I'm going to take this down to about 8, maybe, and click on Convert. And now play it. Hi, it's Bob Doyle. This is a test recording that I'm going to use to test the voice conversion capabilities of RVCs. So most likely, you're hearing me using a different voice saying all of this. So it worked great. I mean, it absolutely sounds like her. But here's another sample, not my voice. And then, and I'm, that's, so I, that's a, something that happened at work the other day. I was telling this story about, so I'm shopping for coffee mugs online and my buddy Brett goes, that? We've uploaded it to the input folder, so we're just going to change this from sample voice to 6.mp3. We'll leave the transpose as it is for now, although we may need to change that. Click on convert, and in just a second now, we have this. Yes, and and, and I'm that's so I would that's a, something that happened at work the other day. I was telling this story about, so I'm shopping for coffee mugs online, and my buddy Brett goes, Dat? is a sentence I will never utter as long as I'm on the planet. If you're new to the world of voice conversion, you need to understand that if you really want to sound like the person whose voice you have cloned or converted, you need to do your best impersonation of the way they talk. If they have a dialect, you'll need to try and do that dialect. If they have a certain way they say certain things, you want to say that, because that's not what's being recorded into the model. What's being recorded into the model is their vocal quality. So that's got all of Tracy's vocal qualities, but it doesn't necessarily have her dialect and other nuances of how she speaks. Now we've created this model 
model and we've tested it here in this program, so what can we do with it? Well, there are lots of pieces of software out there that use RBC models to do their thing, many of which we've covered on this channel. What we need is the PTH model file and then also the .index file, and they are in two separate locations here on this drive. So the first thing we're going to do is go up here to storage and we're going to navigate to assets and then scroll down to weights. And that's where you're going to find the PTH file. And we're looking for the most recent one, the tracystar.pth. We can just click those three dots there and click on download. And that will bring it down to our drive. The next thing we need is the index file. So for that, we'll go back up to storage. We'll click on logs. And then we'll click on the folder that says Tracy Star, And what we're looking for is the word added here. We're going to hover over that and we'll see that it has the .index file. And then we'll download that. I'm going to show you just two of many different software solutions you can use that utilize RBC models because they both utilize them in slightly different ways. First, I'm going to use Kits, which I've talked about on this channel. I'll hopefully put a link up here so you can go back and check them out if you'd like to. I'm going to click on Select a Voice. I'm going to click on My Voices. It's going to bring this up. I'm just going to close this window, and I'm going to click Uploaded right here. Now we can upload an RBC model. I'm just going to click on Upload Voice, and here's where we're going to put in the name, Tracy Star. In Kits, you're uploading the PTH file and the index file separately. So I'm just going to take my PTH file and drop it right there. Take my index file and drop it right there. And then click here to add an image and click on Upload Model. So you can track the upload progress over here. And when it's done, you'll find that in your list of voices. So now let's select it. We'll drop our sample voice on there again. We'll up the semitones again to about eight, like I said. Leave all this alone and click Convert and listen. Hi, it's Bob Doyle. This is a test recording that I'm going to use to test the voice conversion capabilities of RBC. So most likely you're hearing me using a different voice saying all of this. All right, that turned out great. Another program I'm going to show you that uses RBC is Replay. It's free. I've talked about it here on the channel a couple of times already. The process of adding the model is a little different to get the PTH and the index file in there at the same time because there's only this one box to drop your RBC model. If you just drop a PTH file in there, it's fine. It'll just run slow like I said before. But if you want both of them in there, take the PTH file and then the index file. And here on Windows, I can just send it to a zip file. Basically, you just want to compress these into a zip file. However, you do that on your system. Lots of ways to do it. I would name it appropriately. Another Tracy sample. Then I can just drag that zip file right here drop it in, and it will do all the separation on its own and put things where it needs to be. That way you can utilize the index file and get all those speed advantages. So there you have an almost drag and drop solution to voice cloning and conversion that you can use in lots of different software solutions out there. RVC has been something of a standard for quite some time now, so it's still a good idea to understand and utilize this technology if this is the kind of thing you're into. And if this is the kind of thing you're into, perhaps you'd like to subscribe to this channel because, you know, it's the kind of thing we talk about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will...